Hello, I'm Carla Schroer of Cultural Heritage Imaging, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to work with image bundles and projects in the Digital Lab Notebook software. In an earlier video, I showed you how to set up the system using things in the prepare screen, like your equipment and stakeholders. And now we're going to talk about image bundles and projects, which is what we're going to do when we're actually doing our imaging work. Image bundles are central to how this whole system is structured. An image bundle is all of the images that you have taken of a single subject or scene that you're going to process together using one technology. So image bundles are about the technology and the set of images that get processed together, not about the subject. There can be multiple image bundles for the same subject. For example, if I have a sculpture and I take a set of overlapping images to make 3D models using photogrammetry, that's one image bundle. And I took some other photos to show detail areas, that could be another image bundle of documentary images. And let's say I took an RTI where there was an inscription that was hard to read and I wanted to see that. So those would be three different image bundles of the same subject and they could be in the same project or not. So let's talk about projects. What a project is, is just a way of grouping your image bundles and managing your imaging work. So it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be all of the imaging work around a particular exhibition, around a particular archeological dig, around a training class, whatever makes sense as a way of organizing your work. The advantage of a project is if we double click here, all of the information that we put in about the project is automatically included for each image bundle. So when we go to make our submission information packages, our final preservation packages for the image bundle, all the information for the project is going to be included automatically just by associating that image bundle as part of that project. So it's a really handy way to have information that you don't have to keep entering over and over and over. So now we're in the project details screen and you'll notice this red box and this is about the path for the system. So the, the system is designed where there's only one place that we have a full path or an absolute path to our image files. The metadata is being stored in a database that's part of the DLN, but our imaging work is on our hard drive and the software needs to be able to go find that data in order to inspect it, in order to make the submission information packages. So you have to do a little bit of work to help it understand where things are. At the project level, we have a full path or an absolute path and all of the image bundles that are part of that project, that data is relative to the folder where we have the project level image bundle. So what that means is if I move this to a different hard drive or to another computer, as long as I keep things in the relatively same relationship, I only have to change the path in one place. So if I click on modify here, it's going to give me an opportunity to go find um, the project. So I happen to have this in my documents folder and I have a folder that has two different projects in it. And this is the detailed example that we're working on. So I'm going to choose that to use this folder and it brings the other window up on top. I'm going to need to save that. So I save that and now the red box is gone and I have the correct path. So now if I open the image bundles that are part of this project, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have the correct path to those image bundles as well because they're relative to this. All right, so what can I put in the project information? There is information, a description of the project. You can give it a date range of when the imaging work occurred. You can associate documents with a project. So let's say it was a grant funded project. You might want to put your grant proposal or the abstract of your grant proposal in. And documents can be brought in directly and stored in the database and then become part of your metadata exported as part of your submission information package. Um, or you can link out if there are things that are public or that have ISBN numbers or DOI numbers. That's up to you. We're going to talk more about that in another video. I can also associate stakeholders 
with my project. So stakeholders, we made one in the last video and it was the Cultural Heritage Imaging one. And Cultural Heritage Imaging is a nonprofit. So we had information about Cultural Heritage Imaging as an entity, but now what we wanna do is say, what role did Cultural Heritage Imaging play in this project? So that's the stakeholder role. So if I take this one out and put it back over here, uh, and then I go to add it, you'll see that I have the opportunity to say what role uh, Cultural Heritage Imaging played in this project. In this project, we were trainers. It was during a training class. There's also some rights, which we're gonna talk about in another video. So I have my stakeholders and the role that they played. Um, those are really the main things that you want to do to set up your project. And then the image bundles here is gonna be a list of the image bundles that are part of this project. And right now there are three image bundles that are part of this project. So if I click on one, let's do this RTI one, you'll see along the bottom here, just like all the other windows, I have a new, a details, a duplicate, and a delete button. When I have an image bundle, I have additional actions that I can take with the image bundle. I can inspect it, which we'll talk about in another video. I can save the metadata for it as RDF. I can create the submission information package. Again, there's gonna be another video for that. And I can make a human readable report in HTML. So the image bundle is really that central thing that we actually wanna save and preserve. So this is why we have so many other options to work with the image bundles. So let's look at one. Here is an RTI image bundle. When I make an image bundle, uh, I'll show you how to make one in just a second. Let's walk through this for a moment. I have an image bundle and it automatically is gonna get the stakeholders from the project level, but there may be some reason why there's an additional stakeholder or a change in stakeholders for a specific object. I can associate a subject with the, with the image bundle. I can include information about the equipment what equipment did I use to do this? And I can duplicate image bundles. So once I've set this up, and let's say I'm gonna shoot multiple things in the same setup, I can duplicate this, associate a different subject, update whatever needs to be updated, and I don't have to keep entering this. And remember, our equipment is organized into sub-assemblies. So this, by using the sub-assemblies, I was able to easily get all the equipment over here that was associated. In addition to the equipment, it's useful to have information like a photo of the setup because a list of equipment says, okay, I use that equipment, but exactly how was it set up? And that could help me understand a project later. It could help somebody else that wants to look at your data, understand how you collected it. And these photos are intended to be fairly low res snapshots. So they could be images you took with your phone or uh, images that you down res, and they're intended to convey the setup of your imaging work. And you can use the same setup photos over and over and over again. So let's say for RTI, you have a particular setup in your studio and you do a lot of RTI with that setup. You can take a few pictures of it and you can use those same pictures anytime that you uh, use that setup. If you have a kit of gear that you take out in the galleries um, or out on site in archaeology, it's the same thing. So you don't need to take a photo of every single setup. But if you do something unique or different, it's really helpful to have those photos. So these are the key components inside your image bundles. Um, the equipment. And we're going to talk about the work products and the SIPs in uh, future videos. But I want to show you something that's really handy with the system. So I get going on my imaging work. Let's say I shot an RTI and I'm getting ready to shoot another RTI. So I could start by selecting this RTI, duplicating it. So now I get one that is a copy of the previous one. It says copy in the name. So that's going to force me to rename it here. I'm just going to call it test and it's in the same project and I'm not going to change this information and I'm going to save it. And then when I go to save it, it's going to say, well, which things from that image bundle do I actually want to duplicate? So in this case, I want to duplicate the equipment and the setup photos. 
say OK. So now I have a new image bundle. And what I can do here is I can um, create a folder for that image bundle. And it's going to start at the project level where the other one was. Let's just say uh, I'm just going to make a new folder right here. And I'm going to call it test RTI. OK, so I have this test RTI folder. I'm going to use this folder. So that's my top level folder that I just created. And it's underneath the project level folder. And now I can have the system make for me an archival images folder and a working images folder. And let's say work products. That's where my finished things are going to go. These are the default names. I could type in different names here if I want. And I can say create, create, create. Now on my hard drive, those folders are sitting there ready for me. So after I take my photos and I've shot raw and I'm doing my processing, I can just put everything into the folders that this created for me. And this system now knows where everything is on my hard drive. So I can run the inspector and do the archiver and all of that kind of stuff. So it's very uh, helpful and can help you save information. I'm noticing here that for this one, um, this is probably going to be a different subject, so I might want to change the, the notes here to something different. And let's say I change to a uh, different power of my illuminator. I could change that right here, too. So I started from the other information, and I can just modify what's different. If I made a change to the equipment, for example, um, I switched to a different lens, I could just find that lens right here and um, take it out and then find a different lens like the compact macro and, and swap it in. So now I have started from all that other gear and I changed the lens and I changed a couple notes and I immediately have everything ready to go. So that's super handy. Okay. There's one last thing I want to talk about here, and that is about image bundles and how they're structured. So we have two kinds of image bundles. An RTI and a documentary image set are what's called single set image bundles. By definition, when you shoot an RTI, there's only one set of images that you can process together. Even if you did multiple RTIs of the same subject, those are different image bundles, for different areas of the subject, or maybe you did the whole thing and then some details. So the RTI image bundles have one set of images. Photogrammetry, on the other hand, and spectral imaging may have only one set of images, but frequently have more than one set of images that are part of that image bundle. Remember, the image bundle is everything we're going to process together. So in photogrammetry, I may have changed a lens. I may have changed the focus. I may have done other things. I may have used, had multiple people shooting with multiple cameras. But all of that data is going to be processed together. So those are individual separate image sets within the image bundle. So photogrammetry and spectral imaging are multi-set image bundles. So let's go look at one of those. Here's the photogrammetry one. And right here, you'll see the image sets. These are the three image sets for this particular example. And it's in the image sets where you have the information about the equipment and the setup folders as appropriate. You can have um, setup pictures at the image bundle level if it stayed the same for everything. Uh, or you can do it at the individual image set level, depending on what you've done. So that's an important distinction about the image bundles. One other thing to note with the image bundles is that once you create an image bundle, as you have to say what technology it's for. And once you've done that, you can't change it because there are different fields and some different rules about the different technologies. That's it for images, image bundles, and projects. And make sure to check out our other videos, download the user guide, and go to the forums if you need help. Thank you.